So I wanted to share how I'm releasing crates. And so when I release a new version of one of my crates, what is my best practice? So we're going to release the GenAI, which is my library, and it's a multi-AI providers for library for Rust, blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to go from the 0.1.6 to our 0.1.7. That is the goal of today. And so usually, typically, what I have is I have this naming convention where there's only one commit, the commit of the release, that has the version equal to a normal version, 0.1.6 or 0.1.7. Otherwise, is a dash dash alpha RC or dash whip, which is work in progress. That's my best practices. I don't do that for all my crates, but I do that for the one, for the big one, the one that I manage closely. So today is obviously going to remove that. But before that, there's a couple of things that we do. I do always a git log to make sure that everything makes sense. And then, so that makes sense. That is a big one that I did. So... Uh, I go there, I do a command shift search, and that is my debug print. So when I do a debug print uh, in my code, in my test, I often, I mean, I always use these uh, special characters, which I might change because that is SQL like JSON B, but for now, those are the ones I use. So I search to make sure that they are not part of any commit if I miss them. Usually I remove them before any commit. Then the next step is to um, go to the change log. So I don't have a change log for all, but typically for the one again that I manage pretty closely, I do have a change log. So the change log is not always needed because GitHub has a very nice click on a tag. You can see all the change since last tag when there's a V uh, something. So that's my best practices. So you can see that. But this one has is more kind of my edit, my trimmed down version and with some added information such as people can get the gist of it, you know, what was inside this release. So a little bit of editing. It's completely optional, it's just that I like to do that. So here I'm going to put the date, military time, one that orders, and we're going to do that. So now my best practice for when I have a change log, and actually also my commit, is I have this little kind of notation, it's just mine. I start with a dot when it's minor, dash when it's a fix, plus when it's an addition, improvement, change, and refactor. And that allows me to see quickly, you know, what is the nature of a commit. And if a commit has multiple, I will put multiple lines starting with all of those. So that is what I do. So how do I get that from my log? And so you can see here that when I did a git log, we got those kind of things. So now I have a little command line here and I actually do not have an alias on this one, but this is the one that I copy paste from my notes. And that is basically git log pretty format percent B from 0.1.6. And then I put cat such as I have everything at one. And I get all of this. Then I take all of that, go back up, I can, command C, command V. So that is a thing. I'm going to remove the wrapping. And so that is a thing. So now I'm going to remove the empty line. So sometimes obviously when it's not my and it's per request, I don't have this notation, which is fine. I'm not requesting people to follow that. I'm just going to clean this up. So I'm going to remove that. And then this one. So this one was an improvement. This one was minor, minor, and then minor. Thanks a lot for everybody fixing typo. I feel bad. I'm trying to you know, write something with LLMs to fix them. Working with GitHub Copilot, but it's not as good as I wanted. So then I do that, and that allows me to format them very nicely. Now it goes to the next step here where I'm going to actually remove the one that doesn't really matter for people. So the code team doesn't really matter. The unit test matters. This one doesn't matter. It's internal cooking. The typos, big thanks for people that does pull requests with typos, but I'm going to remove them. It's not something that add value uh, for the reader of the change log, but add value for the code. So thank you. Um, this one, I put that. Uh, this one is interesting. That is important. So for this one, I also have this kind of special marker to kind of make it more obvious. And so I'm going to have this is going to be an API change, API change, API change, API change. And that is a, a new one. This one is not API change. So now we have quite a bit of, of changes. And here I can say, see examples, the R3 mapper.rs. And then this one, auth resolver refactor, this one, the same thing. So this way, yes, I'm changing the APIs and it's, you know, I don't follow and we'll explain later the same there at the later for the 0.1.x, but I'm trying to keep 
those in the example, such as people can really follow very nicely. So it's kind of a give and take in a way. So that's my goal, yeah? My goal here is to add a little bit more info such as people can find their deck, it's easier to read, even if I misspell something or I didn't say the right thing into the, uh, the commit, I can clean it up there. So that's my, my goal. Then number two here is, and sometimes I have different commits for those, but I'm going, we are going to upgrade it to 0.1.7. And then on this one, for this library only, I have this special case where again, for the 0.1.x or .z, my best practice is now to say, well, they might break and change from a .x to another .x, but once it's going to be 0 0.2 and above, then it will follow the same variable. So that is a little bit my strategy. The goal of this strategy, and it's a trade-off, it's not perfect, there's no absolute truth. The goal of this strategy is to not have this number growing too fast. Because then after you don't know where is the cutting point of when it was good or not. And then the only thing that you are left with is to have the big 1.0. And the big 1.0, I don't know why. I, it feels that, you know, I would get there once I don't have to code anymore or something. It's, it's weird to me. So my point is right now I have the 1.x, which is beta. The thing is maturing. And when it's 2, then it's pretty robust, it's pretty complete. And then the number 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4 will increase when there's breaking changes. So that would be as follows. And then if one day a 1.0.0 makes sense, I will obviously do that as well. Okay, so that is the strategy. There's no perfect solution right now. The thing I'm saying is make sure that it's clear with the library, the strategies that you are following, such as people know what is the philosophy of the library, even if they don't share it. Okay? That is the most important thing. So because I have that, I have these equal things in few places. So I'm going to do a search like that, and I'm going to replace it by 0.1.7. So if you forget that, it's not the end of the world, but in this case and stuff. I don't really like the redundancy, but that is, you know, works pretty well. So now that I have that, I'm going to do another cargo test here because I always panic a little bit. So that requires to have Olama running and all of the API keys for all of the providers. And then once we have that, git log to make sure that everything's fine. And then perhaps I go quickly on this and then I check those guys. Right? So those guys make sense. I have the thing that makes sense over there if I miss something. So that is good. And then I will say git c update version to 0.1.7. Git log again to see stuff. This makes sense. GPO, that makes sense. And then we're going to do a cargo publish. And that will publish it over there. So then that's it. And then I'm waiting a little bit. Okay. So now this is over there. I'm going to be going to go to the page over there. I'm going to reload it. Yeah, we have the 07. And so what I'm going to do, git log. We have that git uh, tag v.0.1.7. Okay, git log. I do git log all the time. And then I'm going to do a GPO. So GPO is an is my SH alias to, to do git push origin and then tags rangers and then I put tags. Okay, so now this is there. So if I go to uh, the crate here on GitHub, I should see the release as well. So you, now I'm trying to always click on those because sometimes when you forget something, it confuses people. So this one is good. So typically, again, I don't do that for all crates. When I have small crates only for me or, or small repo, I don't care. But on this one, this is what I'm doing just after. And I don't wait later. I do this and I'm going to say git Oops, say git commit. And I have a git c, which is, you guessed it, an alias. git c uh, minor update that version to this. That's it, GPU. Then that's it. So now it's clean. Yes, I have the thing over there. I've done my release. Everything is there. And in the next video, we're going to see what had changed in this release, which is two things pretty cool. Okay, hope that this live coding new format is useful to some. If you liked it, like and subscribe helps a lot. Big thanks to Crab Media for their sponsorship. Until next one, happy coding.